Reader's Corner, Part B. Words are weak. Dear Editor, It was a terrible storm. The thunder roared, the lightning flashed, the wind howled, the tempest beat through the night, bearing on its fleet winds of darkness a torrent of driving, splattering rain. Splintering darts of lightning crackled through the raging storm, the crystalline reflections caught in the driving sheets of watery spray, their swift illuminations lighting but dimly a rocky shore beaten and tossed by black lashing waves of the angry ocean. And upon that ragged element swept shore cowered the searcher. He crouched there in the darkness, his muffled figure swaying to the fierce tug of the wind and the impact of the driving rain. Water ran in streams from his drenched clothing. The icy breath of the wind pierced through to his soul like so many needles of death. Placing a gaunt, weary hand above his brow, he strained his vision to pierce out into the darkness. And suddenly the storm ceased. The rain disappeared with a last futile spray, and the dark clouds overhead parted sullenly to reveal a cold, frozen moon of silver. The thousands of tiny aberrations in the tossing wavelets on the ocean's bottom sent steely reflections of the moon's luminescence and sparkling sheens to the searcher's eyes. For long he hung there motionless, a gaunt shadow peering into the distant darkness of the horizon. But abruptly he started. He has sighted an object floating inward upon the tide. Running swiftly along the shore, he seized it eagerly as it fell to the shore at his feet. With a wild cry of exuberant delight, he threw himself down upon the sands to scan its pages. It was a copy of astounding stories. Yes, out of the great ocean of magazine fiction, it had come to the searcher's eyes. The magazine supreme astounding stories a magazine which was new a magazine which expressed something new in an entirely different way a thing superordinary it was a boon to the tired fiction reader yes sirree something new and in a different way you bet that's what i like and that's why i hearkened and hastened to the newsstands to buy that new magazine astounding stories new authors a breath of delicious novelty, the magazine of tomorrow's romance and the super science thereof. Why, it's almost too good to be true, and here am I, ready to take that new mag to hand and make it our own. Yes, I think we can call it our own, for with the installation of Astounding Stories comes the new epic of the magazine, a magazine which is made by the reader. Sure enough, our wants and whims rule the magazine, so it's surely ours, and I mean possessively. So, readers all, I'm going to take my part of the magazine this day and operate on it no matter what Mr. Bates thinks or cares about it. Yes, sir. First, I'm creating a new department of a page which prints the picture of the most popular author, as voted for by the reader, and which gives a brief synopsis of his life. Once his picture has been printed, that's enough. Next time, a new author. And then I'm filing that magazine with new, different stories, daring in aspect beyond ordinary science fiction, more glorious by far than any predecessors. And now, the rest of you readers, what are you going to do with your share? As I have said, I am going to do what I want with my part, even if I have to split up the magazine and pass a page all around. There's just a lot of you readers who look at a magazine, and because it isn't your ideal, pass it up and go down the line passing up all the magazines. Take it from me, you'll never find your ideal. Savvy? The only way to get that ideal is to step in and take a hand. Make your ideal. A magazine must be fashioned to the reader's wants. The fact is our weapon, and believe me, I'm beaning Mr. Bates a smacking good one with it. As I said, the magazine is ours, 
and my part in it surely is going to be more daring in tone thought and structure than any paltry nowadays science fiction reach out into the imagination stretch your faintest and most superordinary scientific hypothesis to its vaguest straining point and produce a real honest to goodness glorious he-man action magazine of science fiction i mean it and that's how my page is gonna be and i'll bet that i have made my page of that future idealistic magazine merely by writing this letter how about it mr bates aren't we all signed up as associate editors for the future ideal magazine tom olog nine forty fifth street san bernardino california right one on us dear editor i have been following with great interest ray cummings latest piece jetta of the lowlands which is rather unique in its ideas in a recent issue mr cummings explained to his readers that the flyer was made invisible by bending the light rays around it this in itself is quite plausible but when he tells us he could not see the land below him and the other flyer we have to draw a line it is quite plain that if the light is bent away from the hull of the flyer that no light will come to the eyes within and that the invisibility will be more of a hindrance than an advantage however it is a good story and we know that authors cannot be perfect any more than ordinary humans can i'm wishing you the best of luck for your second year which you will soon enter w johnston new york city a riddle dear editor i have only read two issues of astounding stories these two have determined me to continue reading a s until i grow broke or give up my ghost the only brickbats that you are going to get are Use a better grade of paper and bind the magazine more securely. Your stories are okay. In fact, there is only one story in the two issues, October and November, that I did not give a darn about, and that was The Extra Man by Jackson G. As I have been a reader of science fiction for the past four years, I think that I know a little about a good story when I read one. And last but not least, I have a riddle to ask you question what is the difference between an egg and a copy of astounding stories answer when an egg falls it busts but when a copy of astounding stories falls only the cover comes off a steady reader from now on edward anderson 929 south west lake avenue los angeles california high literary quality dear editor just a few words to express my appreciation of the consistently high standard of stories which have so far appeared in astounding stories i was mainly inspired to write to you by those two fine stories brigands of the moon by ray cummings and murder madness by murray leinster the former was one of the year's best interplanetary stories and the latter a very fine adventure yarn as well as being of scientific interest these stories held my interest to the end by reason of their high literary quality and the fact that they did not lack excitement i am afraid that these two qualities are lacking in a large number of science fiction stories i would suggest that you accept these stories as a standard for the magazine a m d pender 201 red lion road tallworth sir Bitten, surrey england expert testimony dear editor we had quite a little discussion at a recent meeting of the scienceers as to why all of us consider astounding stories the best science fiction magazine printed today one reason to which all of us agreed was your endless variety of good continued stories they always have a new twist about them I read a number of science fiction magazines each month. None of them comes anywhere near astounding stories as to the quality of the stories printed. On both long and short stories, they rank way below the astounding standard. Your best writer is Ray Cummings, with Harl Vincent 
and r f starzl close behind i consider vagabonds of space by harl vincent as the best story i have read so far ask mr vincent to give us a sequel herbert smith secretary Science Sears, 2791 Grand Concourse, Bronx, New York City. Heads My List Dear Editor, I'm accepting your kind invitation to come over to The Reader's Corner and express my opinion of your magazine. I like it immensely. I read all the science fiction I can, and your magazine heads my list. I think the serial, The Pirate Planet, is as interesting a story as any I've read. Astounding Stories improves with every issue. Dorothea Cutler, Post Office Box 122, Mesa, Arizona. Two Problems Dear Editor, My last letter was entirely commendatory, but this time I am losing the full force of my critical powers. On the story, Marooned Under the Sea, by Paul Ernst. In this story, the characters descend to the depths of the ocean by means of a large glass sphere. Mr. Ernst mentions the terrific strain on the supporting cable caused by the weight of the sphere. He quite overlooks the fact that it would float. As a matter of fact, the sphere, not counting its contents, weighs about 3,511,520 pounds, less than an equal amount of water. Hard to believe, but true, as the figures show. The formula for the volume of a sphere is V equals pi one-half diameter cubed. It is a pretty little problem. Also, there was no need to break the helmets of the quabos, since the hoses could be cut with an axe. However, it was a fine story. Let's have more like it. Here's another problem. X equals wonderful y equals superb z equals marvelous x y z equals astounding stories yes no you are getting many requests to change your size don't do it as it is now it is just the size to carry conveniently or put in your pocket it is easier to read too don't change your grade of paper either glazed paper is hard on the eyes I join my fervent prayers to those who wish the edges cut smooth, however. It is hard to turn to the page you want with the deckled edge you now have. Earth, the marauder, was wonderful. Too bad it wasn't longer. The pirate planet is fine. Dr. Bird is keeping up the good work. Some of his stories are a bit far-fetched, but that is no drawback. I notice that some authors repeat themselves. I read Brigands of the Moon by Cummings, and also his story, Toronto the Conqueror. The weapons used in both stories are identical. Hugh M. Gilmore, 11307 North Orange Drive, Hollywood, California. Concerning Indisputable Data Dear Editor, From the time Astounding Stories first made its debut, I have been a rabid and enthusiastic reader of your excellent publication. As yet, I have never missed an issue, and only a physical incapability could compel me to. The unlimited amount of pleasure derived from your magazine is beyond compensation. Your selections are varied, interesting, and based on cold scientific logic, barring minor discrepancies. My wholehearted approval, commendation, and good wishes go to you for your remarkably fine work. Continue along the lines you are now pursuing, and I feel assured your magazine will outrival all others in circulation, as it already does in literature. Perhaps I have been a trifle flowery, but I also have a criticism to make. Why do these skeptical and scientifically disposed critics continue to waste your valuable time picking scientific flaws in various stories? Some of the amateur experts' opinions really serve as a comic sequel after a night of interesting reading. If they would only stop to realize that some of their most indisputable data is merely a hypothesis, the criticisms might be more lenient. I am certainly enjoying The Pirate Planet by Charles W. Diffin in the current issue. 
it is exceptionally well written and i am looking forward to more work by his pen other stories of merit are gray denim by harl vincent and slaves of the dust by s w ellis well i guess i've unburdened myself enough for one evening i give you many thanks for hours of enjoyable recreation and wish everlasting success to your illustrious magazine and the personnel that makes it possible mortimer weisinger two sixty six van cortland avenue bronx new york a letter from england dear editor you will no doubt be surprised at receiving a letter of appreciation of your really stunning magazine from england and here let me say as an aside that i think americans are very fortunate in having publishing concerns who are not afraid of publishing a modern book like astounding stories in england i am considered abnormal minded because of my fondness for science fiction we have nothing like it in our bookshops where the stereotyped thriller and prosaic life and adventure novels are popular to the majority of english readers unfortunately my file is incomplete by the june july august and september issues my only kick is that brigands of the moon remains unfinished for me and murder madness whetted my palate for more still i am happy to be now in regular contact with the mag and hope for more stories like the above now for my only brickbat of all the stories i have read the wall of death is the only one i dislike and the worst of it is that it is written by victor rousseau who is one of my favorite authors the story is horribly reminiscent of the old greek myth of the minotaur which it resembles in many phases still this is an exception that proves victor rousseau's stories to be of high average value and i shall expect to see more of him in regards bouquets i can only say that each succeeding magazine is more astounding more wonderful and of better value than the last of your authors i class as favorites s p meek c w diffin murray leinster harl vincent ray cummings and s p wright among others not forgetting victor rousseau in the current edition i think the pirate planet is going strong and gray denim is a peach of a story as is also the ape men of zelati i like extra-dimensional stories of which i see you have one in your next issue so roll on january i should like to see astounding stories printed more often or else have a brother mag the mag itself stands pat as it is and more power to your author's elbows you will please excuse my bad penmanship but since the war in which i served throughout i cannot altogether control the nerves of my right hand when writing i wish you a prosperous future with astounding stories leo greenhill five market terrace st leonard's on sea sussex england at last it's come dear editor i have read all the issues of your magazine from the july issue to the december and it sure fills a long-felt need in science fiction ever since i knew what an atom was i've been longing for just such a mag and at last it's come you sure deserve credit and lots of it you were better at the very start than your competitors ever will be and that's saying a lot as they're pretty good by the way you may have noticed that one of them has come down to your size and price since your mag came out that's proof against big mags they're awful however i would not mind an astounding stories quarterly and i'd gladly pay fifty cents for one as to reprints i'm in favor of them i think a story by edgar rice burroughs running in your mag each month would make it just about perfect as to your authors and stories they're good as a general rule however you've made some pretty bad slips at times such as the invisible death by victor rousseau the wall of death by the same man slaves of dust gray denim and the ape men of zelati in fact the december issue was pretty poor for you i hope you make up for it next month when it comes to artists i think that wesso takes the cake especially in drawing machinery etc 
However, Gould is good on people and inanimate things, and I don't think you should drop him as many seem to wish. I like Wessel's covers very much, and I don't think they are too gaudy for a magazine like yours. I like nearly all science fiction stories, if they are written well, but especially I lean toward interplanetary, atomic adventure, and prehistoric stories. I do not care so much for murders, wars, mind control, etc. I notice that you have never printed a story of prehistoric conditions existing at present on some part of the earth or universe, and I would like to see one of this type. I like serials only if they do not get boresome, and a lot of them do. That is the trouble. I think that the love interest in your stories is a good point and should be encouraged in your authors. And I also think there should be more interplanetary friendship than hatred, and that the heroes should fight beasts rather than men, as a rule, in your stories. Just one more thing before I close. I think that Astounding Stories should have more than one department. I would like to see a list of scientific terms defined each month, a department for answering scientific questions, and some kind of fraternity of science fiction readers with membership cards, some kind of emblems, and possibly an entrance test of some kind. Seriously now, why not consider this and take up a vote among your readers to see what they think? You could cut down on the reader's corner for them without using much more space, or you could enlarge the mag a little. What say? Well, I'm about a Z-ray, so I guess I'll come back to Earth and refuel with the January issue, which will be out soon. So long and good luck. Frank Missman, Jr., V.E.R., very enthusiastic reader, 739 North Alexandria, Los Angeles, California. Grr, she's mad. Dear Editor, Grr, now I am mad. I do wish that people who want a regular instruction book of a magazine would kindly refrain from spending their valuable pennies on ours. And if Mr. Johnston of New Work believes us who like A.S. to be morons, why, let's be morons. For when ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise. I'd like to inform this highly intelligent person that our mag is dealing with pure science fiction. And why should any author go into detail describing how cities are made to float and why invisible cloaks are invisible? Why, if every paragraph were broken off to let us know how this or that is possible, I'm sure we'd all be yawning and nodding over the magazine and finally discard it entirely in search of something more to our liking. Why waste your time, Mr. Johnston, telling us you don't like A.S.? Just don't purchase it if it isn't to your liking. We're satisfied with what we have. But if the stories are like fairy tales, isn't all fiction more or less of a fairy tale? I want Mr. Johnston to get to this point. What we want is fiction, pure science fiction, and not instructions. We read A.S. as a pleasure. We do not have to be scientists just because we are interested in science. The Wall of Death was grand. It's somewhat terrorizing and gruesome, but I get a big kick out of such horrors. However, I hope nothing like that would ever happen, because I'm 18 years old and I'd be among the first ones to be chosen for those mad half-human jellyfishes without a doubt. I shudder to think that meteors could be hurled from one planet to another and then have some kind of machine with people in it on the inside of the meteor, but the hero of the Great Plague surely proved himself a hero in spite of his handicap. I relish the idea of that Venusian instrument by which one can learn all from another within a few minutes, something for our students who cannot seem to learn anything. Here's one point that I don't like. Why are all those invaders from other planets hostile? Why can't they go on an exploring expedition to our Earth? Come on, you authors, get busy. The pirate planet has me all hot and bothered, and my brain in a muddle how any craft of such dimension can move through space with such speed. As the story has just started, I can't say much about it, 
but here's hoping the captured hero conquers the hostile invaders and comes home with bells on and colors flying as all good stories should end that sargasso sea and vagabonds of space reminds me of a halloween ghost and it was just as bad as a ghost too after having been scattered once it just coolly collects itself into twice its size brr that gives me the chills howsoever nevertheless be that as it may i will say that i liked it so much that i'm asking for more like it another word to ye authors please do not always have the girls in your stories such sweet little bundles of humanity aren't there any tall girls in your imagination please give us tall girls a break once in a while it makes me feel better thanks gertrude hinken fifty seven thirty south Ashland avenue chicago illinois end of section twenty nine